Hey woodworkers, this is Seth with Stuff Seth Makes and in today's video, I'm making the tapering jig of my dreams. <laughs> now I've got a Rockler tapering jig and I've used it for a while but it's kind of run out of steam and these days, it just doesn't fit my needs. So I made one that does. Let's watch. To get started, I'm setting my table saw fence to 11 inches. And this is wider than the finished jig will be but you'll see why I'm making it too wide in just a minute. And I'm using some scrap 3 quarter inch plywood for this and I think it's better than using MDF since MDF is so soft. And later on I'll be installing threaded inserts and I just feel like there is a better chance that they'll get ripped out of place if I were using MDF. I also chopped it down to 32 inches long because I've got stop dados on my outfeed table and 32 inches is all I've got room for. But you can certainly make this longer if your outfeed area allows for it. With any table saw jig or sled, you'll need a hardwood runner to fit in one of the slots. And I just used some red oak I had laying around. And usually I rip it a little wide and sort of nibble away at the width until it fits just right. But today must be my lucky day because my first rip fit pretty dang nice. Nice. With that dialed in, I can just measure the depth of the slot and then round it down to the next easiest measurement and rip it again. If you've ever made a sled for your table saw, you're probably familiar with using pennies or washers in the slot and then laying the runner down so it sits just a tiny bit proud of the surface. To get the initial bond between the runner and the plywood, I'm going to use some CA glue on just the runner. Then I'm going to spray some accelerator on the plywood so when I lay the plywood down, I'll get a good fast bond in just a few seconds. And this holds the runner securely in place until I can seal the deal with some screws. I'm using one of my Amana countersink bits to drill holes in the underside of the runners. I love these countersink bits, and of course I'll have a link down in the description. I'm also using some screws that I had to cut down because I didn't have any shorter ones on hand, so I was just using what I had. The screws are going to give it that permanent connection. Even though the runner fit in the slot perfectly to begin with, now that it's mounted with the screws, it's a little too snug. So I like to take a pencil or a china marker china. and make a line along the edge of the runner. Then I slide it back and forth in the slot and inspect the marks. This can give a good indication of where the runner is rubbing. And you can see the markings are kind of smudged right here and a little bit right here. So I just take some sandpaper and sand it a little bit, test fitting along the way until the fit is back where I like it. Now I can cut off the excess runner and use a chisel to bevel the front corners of the runner, being very careful not to stab myself in the stomach with the chisel. After that, I raise the blade and I can make a cut that gives me that nice crisp edge. And this is why I made that piece of plywood a little bit wide to begin with. Next up, I rip some one inch strips of thin material. You could use MDF or plywood or whatever you want. I think this stuff is a plywood veneer over an MDF core. I'm gonna use this to make a replaceable zero clearance insert and I'm making a few of them so that I have them on hand when I need them down the road. To install the zero clearance insert, I head to the router table and load up a three quarter inch straight bit and I set the height of the bit so it matches the thickness of the thin strips I just ripped. Then I set the fence so that it covers about a quarter of that bit. Now I can send the blade side edge of the tapering jig over the bit and what that does is it gives me a rabbit that the thin strips will fit in. The strip is a little wide but I did that intentionally and I'll slice off the excess in a minute. And since I'm making a few of the inserts at once, I'm using the drill press to drill some holes in all of them at the same time. Now I can use those holes to tap a reference mark in the rabbit and then drill some holes for some threaded inserts. I'm gonna install these little 832 threaded inserts into the holes I just drilled. Using my smallest Amana countersink bit, I drilled some countersunk holes in the strips where my pilot holes were. And finally, I can secure the zero clearance inserts in place with some fancy brass screws. Again, it was all I had handy in the size I needed, so brass it is. And of course, with the insert in place, I can rip off the excess, and once again, I've got my nice crispy edge.
For the next step, I've prepped some scrap wood. The thicker stuff is one and a half inches thick and the other one is three quarters of an inch thick and they're each three and a half inches by two inches. I'm also using toggle clamps for this jig. These right here are the vertical style toggle clamps and then these are the horizontal style toggle clamps. And for this jig, it doesn't matter which style you use. You'll need screws to secure the toggle clamp to the scrap blocks and make sure that the screw length isn't too long for the scrap blocks. You don't want it poking through the other side. I'll be using some quarter 20 threaded inserts. I'll be using some quarter 20 bolts with washers, making sure that the bolt length is about a half inch longer than the thickness of the scrap blocks. I'm marking where the toggles will go on the scrap and I'm just eyeballing it to get it as close to center as I can. Being perfect here isn't critical for this step. Now I'm gonna make marks for the bolt holes. For these holes, you're gonna to wanna to get the location as accurate as possible across all the blocks because their alignment is gonna come into play later. And then go ahead and drill those holes. I'm also pre-drilling some holes so I can mount the toggle clamps to these blocks. Then just do the same thing for however many toggle clamps and blocks you have. You'll see I made this pattern down the center of the jig and I just used a sharpie to put this on here so that I know where the runner is on the underside. For this demonstration, I'm just using a piece of scrap plywood as the workpiece, and that way we can find a spot to mount the first toggle clamp. So you just line up the edge of the jig to whatever the marks are that you made on your workpiece. When you've got it where you want it, you just need to mark the location of the holes onto the jig. And again, it's best to be as accurate as you can here. These marks are gonna be the locations for the threaded inserts. When using threaded inserts, I always like to use a Forstner bit to drill a shallow pocket first, and that sort of acts like a countersink hole to accommodate the lip around the edge of this particular threaded insert. I think there are some threaded inserts that don't have this lip. If you're using those kind, you can skip the Forstner bit. Then I can drill a regular hole using a bit that's slightly narrower than the threaded insert. And then I can use an Allen wrench or a specialty bit to drive the inserts into place. And you can see how that Forstner bit hole allows the insert to sit flush or even just below the surface, and that's exactly what we want. Now you can use the bolts to go through the block and into the threaded inserts and tighten it down. Then you can secure that end of your workpiece and just repeat those same steps for that second toggle clamp block. Now I get to make the first cut and see how everything works. The first cut was perfect and of course, I expected nothing less. Now let's say you needed to make a different cut where maybe you could keep the first toggle clamp where it is. All you need to do is take off that second toggle clamp and put it where it works best for the cut. Make your marks, drill your holes for the threaded inserts, and bolt down the toggle block. Now you can secure the workpiece and make that cut. I made the one and a half inch thick blocks to use when I need to make cuts on thicker material. So, surprise, surprise, I'm installing another set of threaded inserts near one end of this thicker workpiece. On the other end, I'm using one of the existing inserts from before, and I'm just adding one new one. And the more I use this jig, the more inserts I'll install, and the more and more versatile this jig will become. Come to think of it, I have a use for this jig right now for a side table I'm building. I don't need it to cut an angle or a taper, but I do need to make a straight cut to clean up a messy edge. And yeah, I have a track saw, but I wanna try this instead. My workpiece is just over a half inch thick, and even with the toggle clamps extended all the way, they didn't quite secure it tight enough. 
My on-the-fly solution is to grab a piece of thin scrap and sandwich it betwixt the rubber pad and the workpiece. Now we're in good shape. You can see my reference marks are lined up on the clean edge of the jig. Now we can make this cut. So hopefully you guys can see why I think this is such a versatile jig. You can do all your tapering cuts with this and you can cut some maybe weird angles that are otherwise a little sketchy to cut over at the miter saw. You can clean up these edges and get them nice and straight. And with that, I guess you can actually use it as a joiner if you didn't have a joiner. But one of the other things that I like so much about this is that I think that this jig is gonna get better the more I use it. So the more cuts that I make with it and the more angles and projects that I do, I'm gonna have more threaded inserts installed and that's just gonna give me so many options of where I can place these toggle clamps to secure down pieces of all shapes and sizes. So this is actually the second version of this tapering jig that I built and this is the first one, kind of like my prototype and you can see I stole the aluminum runner off of my Rockler tapering jig and now that I've had a chance to use both of these, I actually prefer this one with the hardwood runner for whatever reason, I don't know. But it was really nice to have this when I was doing a couple of my Zelo side tables and using this model right here was super helpful. So I was like, oh, let's make a new model, show you guys, and also add that replaceable zero clearance insert. So that's definitely nice to have on this because I know I'm gonna get it all munched up over time. And of course, there's probably some of you that think that making these holes and putting these inserts and locking down these toggle clamps that way is probably more trouble than it's worth, but I gotta disagree because these things hold down the workpiece really tight. And I really like that because last thing you want is your workpiece shooting off and flying out and hitting you in the who knows what. But I hope you guys like this video, like the project. Leave me some comments down below. Let me know if there's ways that you think I could improve this jig, or if you've already thought of something similar, Tell me, I thought I was being original with it, but you never know, there's a million things out there. Anyways, you guys, I hope you like this video. Subscribe if you want, and I'll catch you on the next one.